Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about head and power developed by a centrifugal pump and also its efficiency while doing that. Please remember that in this lecture, whatever we are going to discuss is going to be accurate for centrifugal pump. However, most of it is also true for reciprocating pump. However, a few things are slightly different. So in this lecture, we are only focusing on centrifugal pump. So let's first discuss about head and what it means. So when we talk about head developed by a centrifugal pump, there can be three types of heads. One is static head, manometric head and total or effective head. So let's try to understand them one by one. The static head, it is defined as simply the difference between piezometric head at the outlet and piezometric head at the inlet. Now what do we mean by this is let's try to understand with simple schematic diagram of a pump system. So suppose this is our pump and it is going to deliver water through this pipe and it is drawing water from a supply tank suppose here. Now for this example let's assume that this delivery pipe is connected to an overhead tank or we can also call it the delivery tank. Now if we have different levels of water in these two tanks suppose in the supply tank water level is this much and in the delivery tank also there is some amount of water which is this much. So the static head by definition is the difference between the piezometric head at the outlet that means at this point that is the end of the pipeline where it connects to the delivery tank and piezometric head at the inlet of the suction pipe that means at this point the opening through which water is going to be drawn from the supply tank. So whatever are the piezometric heads at these two points their difference will be called the static head. Now for piezometric head we know that it is the sum of datum head and pressure head. So at this point the datum head is simply its height. So if we measure height from suppose an arbitrary datum Suppose this bottom line is our datum line which is maybe the floor level or ground level or any other datum that you can consider. This datum head plus the pressure head at this point the additional water which is above the outlet will also exert some pressure so that will be the pressure head. So this pressure head plus the datum head together will be called the static uh, will be the piezometric head at the outlet that means at this point. This is pressure head and this is datum head or elevation head. Now the static head will be the difference of this whole quantity and the piezometric head at this point. Similarly piezometric head at this point can also be found out by adding its height that means this much is the height and this much is the pressure head because of this amount of water or any other liquid. So the difference between these two will be equal to in this figure it will be equal to this much and this is called the static head we are going to write it as HS. So that is the static head. We can use another 
definition as well it is simply the difference in water level between the delivery tank and the supply tank so which is also apparent from this figure itself this height or this head is simply the difference between this water level and this water level but we are not using that definition because sometimes although the supply is all, almost always from a certain tank but the delivery may not be always to a tank but it may be just into the atmosphere so in that case the if we make the definition in terms of two tanks it will not be valid so we have used the term piezometric head and if it is simply delivering into the atmosphere here so let's say this is the delivery pipe this is the end of the pipe and it is simply delivering to the atmosphere releasing the water to the atmosphere so the piezometric head at this point will be simply its datum head measured from the arbitrary datum so this height and the pressure head will be zero because it is delivering into the atmosphere in addition to that there is another definition of the static head which can be written as sum of suction head and delivery head now what is suction head and delivery head for that we'll have to identify these pipes this pipe is called the delivery pipe while this pipe is called the suction pipe it's quite clear why they're called so the pump is drawing water from the supply tank through this pipe and through suction and it is delivering to the other side through this pipe and that's why they are called suction pipe and delivery pipes and the head against which or head through which the pump has to work just to draw water from this tank into the pump casing is called the suction head and in this example it is equal to the difference between this water level and the center line of this inlet into the pump so this height is equal to the suction head and the delivery head will be equal to whatever is remaining up to the delivery point and from this point if we measure we we'll have to measure up to this point that means the water level in the tank and why up to this level and not only up to this level it's because to deliver it into the tank it also has to work against this much head of water which is already there above the outlet end of the pipe and therefore whatever is the height up to this point plus this additional pipe uh, this additional head will be that is the head against which the pump has to work just to deliver the water into this tank which was already drawn into the pump through the suction pipe so here also if you look at the diagram this distance plus this distance is equal to same as this distance which is the suction head there can be a different situation where the delivery tank that is this tank may be above the pump level so for that suppose this is the pump this is the this is the pump this is the suction pipe and 
it already has water which is above the level of the pump so in that case our suction head will be again measured from the center line of the suction pipe when it where it is connected to the pump casing and this water level and why it is negative it's because the pump doesn't have to work through this head to bring water into the casing and this head is actually working to push the water into the casing and therefore you can say that the pump doesn't have to work the water itself is working to enter the pump casing and after that the pump will be able to deliver it to some other tank which is the delivery tank now in this case also if this is the water level in the delivery tank then the static head will be equal to this much and which is the delivery head plus suction head which we have already defined here sum of suction head and delivery head so in this case the suction head is negative suppose minus h suction plus the delivery head which is equal to this much and clearly the static head hs is equal to this minus this that is the delivery head minus the suction head we can say it is delivery head plus suction head but suction head itself is negative so we can say it is as delivery head minus suction head so this is all about uh, static head now the next type of head is manometric head so when the pump is having to work through that elevation difference from the supply tank up to the delivery tank then in the static head we only considered the force of gravity against which the pump has to work but in practice there will also be friction inside this pipe and also some minor losses at entry at exit and all these bends and joints etc so when we consider all those things then it is called the manometric head so manometric head basically is the static head plus the losses in pipe and the minor head losses we can also define it as the total head at the outlet of the delivery pipe and total head at the inlet of the suction pipe and if you have a closer look the delivery at the end whatever head is remaining it will be pressure head suppose p at the delivery head and delivery end which is pb by rho g plus v b square by 2g plus z that is datum minus p of inlet divided by rho g plus velocity at which it is entering the inlet vi by 2g vi square by 2g plus z or the datum or the elevation of the inlet end so whatever is the difference that will be equal to the manometric head now another head which we also call the total head or gross head 
or sometimes effective head it is all those all the other heads that is static head plus the losses which will give us manometric head yes. static head plus losses major and minor plus some extra head will be lost inside the pump so if this is suppose your pump water will be entering this pump some head will be lost in the pipe some head will be lost in the delivery pipe again but inside the pump also because it is moved by this kind of an impeller so there will be friction with the impeller there will be some turbulences some water will be having friction with the outside casing and some water will be simply swirling, swirling around where it is not effectively pushed into the delivery pipe so all those kind of losses will be there and when we count those losses also then the head is called the total head so it is equal to static head plus the major and minor losses plus loss in pump so loss in pump may be because of the turbulence maybe because of friction with the impeller friction with the casing and so on now with this we can come to the power of a pump that means to deliver water against this kind of a head that means uh, this height difference and the friction the pump has to spend energy or do work and the rate at which it is going to do the work or it is going to spend the energy is called the power of the pump so power as from the definition we know it is work done per unit time but right now we are only considering about considering the power output and let's see what the output means so work done as we know is force into distance then power therefore is force into distance divided by time that is rate of change of work rate, uh, rate of work per unit time now force into distance we know it is mass into acceleration this is force and multiplied by distance now we'll just rearrange these terms we'll bring time closer to mass so this time we are bringing it to mass so now this become mass divided by time mass per unit time then acceleration and distance so mass per unit time to find that we know what is volume per unit time and that is simply discharge meter cube per second or cubic feet per second so that is the discharge when we multiply that with density we get mass per unit time which is this quantity mass divided by time then multiplied by acceleration and distance so therefore we can write it as rho into q into g into h rho is density q is discharge g is acceleration due to gravity and h is the distance now uh, we have without explaining we simply wrote acceleration as acceleration due to gravity and distance as the head why are we doing that because the distance could also mean horizontal distance or if the pipe itself was curved then it would be the curved distance but here we are only considering head as the distance and acceleration as acceleration due to gravity and that's because the static head is self-explanatory it is simply the height difference therefore there the acceleration is actually against gravity however the other losses that is because of the length of the pipe whatever friction loss is happening inside the pipe 
that also we expressed in terms of head. Now, what does it mean? It means that if the friction was not there, right now if the pump is delivering water at a certain rate up to this much height, if the friction loss was not there, suppose HF, then it would be able to deliver the same discharge up to a greater height which is equal to this which is equivalent to this frictional head that means we are delivering this much this discharge q up to a certain height h only because there is friction and therefore whatever distance the work has uh, the force has worked it is expressed in terms of vertical height when acted against acceleration due to gravity. So that is why we are expressing everything, everything in terms of height that is vertical distance and acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, not any other acceleration or any other distance. Now therefore power output of a pump if we simply combine g and q uh, g and rho that is gamma which is specific weight or sometimes we call it unit weight of the liquid so that is our power output of a pump now this is also sometimes called water power now gamma is specific weight and q is discharge now head we have learned about three different types of head. Now, in this formula, let's try to understand which head we are going to use. We have learned about static head, manometric head, and total head. So, if we take the static head physically, it means the distance traveled against gravitational force, as we have already explained. So, if this is the pump, this is the delivery pipe, this is the delivery tank and it is drawing water from another tank which is the supply tank so this is the static head but the water is also pumped against friction and therefore the frictional head loss is equivalent to the work done or energy spent per unit weight against frictional force which means that in absence of friction i've already explained this it would be able to deliver the same thing at a higher level how much higher that is equivalent to the frictional head or frictional head loss similarly the minor losses are also to be considered as uh, if the minor losses such as losses at bend joint and entry exit etc they were not there uh, then also the pump would be able to deliver this water to a slightly greater head suppose this much that's why these are called minor head losses they are quite small compared to the major loss which is the friction loss inside the pipe now when we consider this static head and the frictional losses and minor losses then we know that the head that we are going to consider in the formula p equal to gamma q h this is the manometric head and not the static head but there comes another question why not the total head the total head is as we have explained in the previous slide which is the manometric head plus the loss inside the pump through the impeller because of the casing and so on so why are we not considering that head here and for that we have to understand something called the efficiency and uh, we can also think in a very simplistic way in a way uh, that if head is lost inside the pump that is not the fault of the pipeline that means that loss we want to attribute to the pump and not to the outside system so that's why 
we are considering only up to the manometric head and not the total head because these things are under our control the length of the pipe the bends and all those things or smoothness of the pipe if the pipe was smoother then the frictional head loss will be less and so on so those things are under our control uh, our, us means those who are going to set up the pipeline or fix the pump but whatever he head loss is there inside the pump we don't want to take responsibility for that and for that we are going to hold the pump manufacturers or designers responsible so whatever head is lost inside the pump that will be termed as the efficiency of the pump so efficiency uh, as we know this is the power output let's call it p naught which is equal to gamma q h manometric h mano means the manometric head then the sum power will be lost while transferring the power from the shaft to the water through the impeller that means if this is suppose the impeller and this shaft which is connected to a electric motor so this shaft is rotating it is delivering some power but that all of that power is not transferred to the water which is inside the pump and that is because of friction with these impellers and some water will be simply moving inside the casing without being affected by the rotation of the impeller if the design is not properly done some friction will be there with the casing at, uh, also and that's why whatever power was delivered by this shaft which was being rotated that is not entirely delivered to the water and some of that power is lost and it will be lost into the surroundings after some time through sound heat vibration etc so there we bring in the term efficiency of the pump so as we know the power at the shaft is greater than the output power therefore efficiency of the pump which is eta p the greek letter eta is this elongated n so eta of the pump or efficiency of the pump is the output power divided by the shaft power so that is the efficiency of the pump now how do we increase efficiency if we design these innards of the pump properly now what do we mean by proper design suppose if we have this kind of an impeller which is an open impeller then the efficiency will be le less and that's because it is not properly directing the fluid in the desired direction and fluid has room to move around in random directions and that's why if you're pushing the water in this direction some of it will be going this direction this direction and so on if we make a closed impeller uh, if you remember from the previous lecture it is an impeller which is sandwiched between this kind of a uh, sandwich between two shrouds or two plates so in that case it will be much more effective in delivering or in uh, directing the uh, water in the proper direction and into this delivery pipe so and the uh, angle the curvature of these blades will also be important and that's the job of the mechanical engineers and who will be responsible for the efficiency of the pump so this is how we find out efficiency of the pump we find out how much power is actually delivered and how much power is actually there at the shaft that means at what power this shaft is rotating this impeller so that is the efficiency of the pump now there is another efficiency which is efficiency of the motor or engine so the shaft is not simply rotating itself it is rotated by an electric motor or sometimes a diesel engine or some other kind of engine so 
while converting that electrical energy into mechanical energy or the rotational mechanical energy, some energy is again lost. Suppose if we have a pump like this, which is so this is suppose the electric motor and here is our pump casing and inside that we'll have the impeller and the impeller is rotated by rotating this shaft and this shaft is rotated by running this electric motor which has all those coils and magnets inside so this will be drawing water uh, drawing power from a power outlet so whatever power suppose so many kilowatts or watts is delivered to this electric motor that same amount of power is not delivered to the shaft and that's because the inefficiencies in the coil and magnet and some other friction and elements inside some eddy currents will be there so all, because of all those reasons the same amount of power will not be delivered to the shaft and that is the fault of the electric motor or the diesel engine if we use it we use a diesel engine now so for that the motor efficiency is termed as eta m and it is the shaft power divided by the input power input power is whatever is drawn from the electric electrical lines or the switchboard so that is the input power and the shaft power is whatever is available at the shaft so we have after that the overall efficiency that means we have some losses at the propeller level or at the impeller level where the shaft was actually delivering some power but the same power could not be delivered to the water therefore at that point if we have some inefficiencies and we are expressing that in terms of efficiency which will be suppose 80 percent or 0 0.8 if you want to write it in decimal and the efficiency of the electric motor or the diesel engine will be the motor efficiency eta m suppose that that is also about 90 percent or 0 0.9 so when we combine both of them we'll have to multiply and then we'll get the overall efficiency now what is overall efficiency it is the product of these two efficiencies the pump efficiency and motor efficiency or it can also be expressed as eta overall is equal to output power divided by input power because the output power or the power output is equal to the shaft power divided by the efficiency of the pump and therefore uh, we can also write it as efficiency of the pump equal to sorry this has to be multiplied into eta of pump yeah. output power is equal to shaft power into efficiency of the pump and shaft power is equal to input power multiplied by the efficiency of the motor so from this if you rearrange all these terms then you'll get that the overall efficiency is output power by input power and it can be obtained by multiplying these two efficiencies at these two levels levels means one at the level of the motor and one at the level of the pump 
so this these are all about head uh, power and efficiency of a pump now let's try to uh, think of an example where these things are going to be necessary uh, one more thing before the example we have derived the uh, power as p equal to gamma q h if we put everything in si units then we'll get the unit as watt but if you want it in kilowatts most of the commercially available pumps are provided in kilowatts so you can buy a 1 kilowatt or 2 kilowatt pump so in that case you'll have to divide it by 1000 and then you'll get the capacity or the power of the pump in kilowatts sometimes they are also provided also available in terms of horsepower so in that case instead of 1000 you'll have to divide it by 746 approximately it is 745 point something something 0.6 something so we'll approximate that to 746 so in that case watt divided by 746 is equal to 1 horsepower equal to horsepower and that brings to uh, brings us to another point which is called the brake horsepower or bhp so bhp is the power available at the shaft so if this is the pump this is the motor suppose and it is rotating this shaft so whatever shaft power is available that is shaft horsepower if we express it in terms of horsepower shp is equal to actually the bhp or brake horse power you must have heard this term in different situations for uh, different engines and cars and so on so that's that is equal to in this kind of a uh, motor it is equal to the shaft horsepower or shaft power can uh, express in terms of horsepower now let's try to do an example try to think of an example let's say we have a a, a domestic building and they have an underground tank water tank and for day to day use from this tank they lift water up to an overhead tank now for the sake of the example let's say this overhead tank is like this and this tank is filled from the top that means the outlet is not submerged in water it is simply delivering into the atmosphere now this tank is suppose at a certain height and the outlet itself is at uh, 5 meter height from the ground and this underground tank it is its bottom is suppose at um, 2 meter from the ground level so what will be the practical problem in this case the problem is that let's say we want to every day in the morning we'll have to fill up this overhead tank from the water available in this underground tank now the underground tank is at a level 2 meter below the ground and for the sake of example suppose this is filled up to 1.5 meters 
the depth of water from the bottom is 1.5 meter and this suction pipe is inserted into the underground tank. Now we don't want to run the motor for two hours just to fill up this suppose 1000 liter syntax tank okay? because that's the brand most people use and and we don't want to wait for suppose two hours we want to want it to be filled within 15 minutes now for 15 minutes if we want to fill it up then we'll have to find out what should be the discharge so in 15 minutes we want to fill up 1000 liters so from that we can find out what should be the discharge so discharge we can find out so many liters per minute or so many meter cube per second if we convert it to um, SI units then we'll have to look at the pipelines the pipelines suppose from here to here there is some length suppose 3 meter then there will be a bend then it will be dipped inside and that will be some other length then after that it will have to be lifted to this much length then this additional length is there and so on so from these lengths and the respective joints and bends and so on we can find out what could be the head loss inside the pipeline starting from the inlet up to the outlet the total head loss we can find out and if that head loss is suppose uh, the frictional head loss HF plus the minor head losses HM H minor those we can find out from our knowledge of pipe flow HF is simply FLV square by twice GD and if these diameters are different then we have to use two different formulas if we consider the same diameter of pipe then it is just 1D then the minor losses for the bends and entry exit you can calculate and therefore we can find out the total manometric head which will be these terms plus the actual head difference uh, the static head difference which will be as we have understood from the previous discussion from here up to the water level So this is the static head we have to add this to the frictional head so this is the total head against which the pump has to work and then the pump will have its own efficiencies efficiency issues and therefore we'll have to decide what kind of a pump we are going to buy for our house or what capacity of a pump we have to buy for our house so that from this tank we can fill up this 1000 liter overhead tank in 15 minutes it's up to your expectations how fast do you want it to be filled if you are okay with uh, waiting for one hour just to fill up this tank then you can buy a smaller pump suppose uh, that 0.25 horsepower or if you want it to be filled within 15 or 20 minutes maybe you will have to buy a higher capacity pump which is about 0.5 or 1 horsepower and so on so i leave it to you what kind of uh, what capacity of pump you will have to purchase for your home so that this tank can be filled in 15 minutes and also some other data or information you'll have to assume what is the friction factor for this pipe what are the loss coefficients for the joints so those things are generally available in for commercial pipes suppose if you are buying a gi pipe or galvanized iron pipe of a certain brand so they will generally uh, have the data of what is the actual roughness of the pipe inside and from that roughness from the table that we discussed in pipe flow that is the moody's chart we can find out what could be the friction factor f which will be used in the formula 
एफ एल वी स्क्वायर बाय टू जी डी सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल दैट यू कैन ट्राई बाय यूजिंग डिफरेंट नंबर ऑफ कोर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ वन थाउजेंड लीटर यू कैन टेक सम अदर नंबर एंड ट्राई इट आई लिव दिस लेक्चर हियर एंड थैंक यू